So the video that I'm presenting today was created by shooting in the Lake District on a nice sunny day on the Fuji X-T4 using F-Log for the video and RAW for the pictures. Now those two things represent a challenge if you're going HDR. So as, as I described in another video and is up on my GitHub, I have a set of 65 by 65 by 65 LUT cubes which map F-Log to SMPTE 2084PQ. And those are the things that I use to convert F-Log into HDR video directly. So I'm not using a standard cube from Fuji. I'm not using something that costs any money. You, they were created with LuckCalc for free and they're on my GitHub. Once I'm in um, HDR, then I can post process, grade, etc. But I get a true representation of what the camera is seeing by using those LUTs. Now, we have a similar problem on, um, on images because they are in RAW, and what does that mean? Well, the software that comes uh, with the Fuji, you, you download it for processing RAW, by default will put things out in the wrong color space. So we set the color space to BT2020, and therefore we get the full color space in the uh, output TIFF files, and then uh, the TIFF files come out with a gamma curve of sRGB, which isn't ideal, but again, I have LUTs up on my GitHub, which will take the, um, B the uh, BT2020 color gamut sRGB gamma uh, raw files, and it converts those into the HDR SMPTE2084. So then I have the ability to, to create images, uh, sorry, video from images, and I have the capability of taking F-Log video at 10 bit and turning that into uh, HDR video. So at no point do I go through SDR, at no point do I go down to 8 bits, and at no point do we crush it down into the smaller color space of the record BT709. So this is how it's done. Then there were a few challenges further. As you will see, there's some zoom effects, there's some unsharp mask effects. None of those things work in 16-bit in FFmpeg, or 32-bit floating point for that matter if you use the standard filters. And this is a common problem with uh, video processing software, that it doesn't support HDR at each point in the pipeline. So again, up on my GitHub are some scripts that will allow you with FFmpeg to do these effects. They will do zoom, they will do applying LUTs, they will bend curves, they will turn things to monochrome. Uh, I have uh, an unsharp mask that's now working, it's relative, relatively efficient. So then I can take the video, which might be a bit handheld or a bit wobbly, and add zoom to it. That's, that makes it much more interesting. We can zoom the images. We can add unsharp mask to bring up a little bit more sharpness, especially for deeply zoomed video. That helps a little bit, but not too much, or it will look absolutely terrible. And I've used a few fade to monochrome effects. So I'm going to demo this now and stop talking. It's a couple of minutes and some nice music. And then hopefully over the next few weeks, I can make videos explaining each piece of this. Big shout out to anybody who would be interested in collaborating on GitHub or just go on my GitHub and use the LUTs there for free. Have a look at the scripts. Whatever you do, don't ruin the wonderful quality of F-Log HDR video by going through standard 8-bit processors and crushing the color space. A video about why skies turn purple, which is related to that, coming up next. Catch you next time. Mm -hmm.